awe inspiring, heart stopping, mind blowing, death defying, and incredibly rare. These are amazing moments. This time we witness an incredible feat that literally takes us to the ends of the earth. These four experienced base jumpers have scaled every possible structure. Buildings, bridges, antennae and cliffs only to jump off and soar through the skies. Now they are on Canada's remote Baffin Island, north of the Arctic Circle. This is their most extreme challenge yet. It is one of the coldest places anyone could imagine. The temperature dips as low as minus 15 degrees Celsius. This is a pretty hardcore climb. They've braved intense cold, ice crevices, avalanches, and fierce polar bears. We're doing the most extreme sport in the world, in the most extreme place in the world, and there's nobody here to rescue us if we get into danger at all. It's been brutal getting here, and this jump could kill them. But it's the moment they've dreamt of for months. My heart is going. Oh. All right, Dwayne? Yeah, mate. What would happen if you cut open a helmet? Richard and Johnny are gonna do just that. I'm using a 110 volt angle grinder at full throttle. The cutting disc is made of silicon carbide and it's spinning at around 11,000 revolutions per minute. But it's still taking over 30 seconds to get through the toughened outer shell, which is made from thin but very strong fiberglass. A lightweight but low cost material that's used to make everything from powerboat hulls to wings for gliders. So what have we got? We've got a half a helmet. Good cutting. Thanks. Underneath the hard outer shell, there's a thick layer of polystyrene, similar to the material used to package new electrical goods. It may not be sophisticated, but it's one of the best lightweight shock-absorbing materials around. Beetle 28, you are clear for takeoff. Disasters don't just happen. They're a chain of critical events. Unraveling the clues, we count down aviation's worst crashes. Bingo. April 28, 1988. Aloha Airlines, flight 243 is traveling from Hello Airport to Honolulu. It's the ninth flight of the day, nothing unusual for Aloha. As the plane rises to its cruising altitude, the air pressure outside the cabin gets dangerously low. The oxygen pressure constantly pushes against the fuselage, trying to escape into the surrounding atmosphere. The Aloha Airlines Flight 243 passengers are about to learn what happens when that air suddenly escapes. What the How to get down? Against all odds, the flight crew land their bruised and battered airplane. All passengers and crew survive, except for one flight attendant. 
Investigators find that the Aloha jet is 19 years old and has logged an astonishing 89,000 separate flights. However, the 737s are designed for a 20-year service life and recommended 75,000 flights only. On interviewing some of the passengers, investigator Jim Wiley also learned that they had seen a small crack in the fuselage just to the right of the door. The Aloha Airline 243 suffered what experts call an explosive decompression. The tear straps did not contain the rupture caused by the metal fatigue. There were so many cracks in the fuselage that they eventually joined together, tearing an enormous hole in the plane. It had lost 35 square meters of its fuselage. The Aloha story was a brutal lesson in the dangers of metal fatigue and the power of cabin pressure. But it was an important step to making passenger jets safer. One. Two, three. How do you know of a world that exists if it can't be seen by the naked eye? We're using this special digital cinema camera to shoot these images at a rate of more than a thousand frames per second. Whoa! A balloon disappears in an instant, yet for a brief moment in time, the water holds its shape. Three, two, one. Water has physical properties that most people never really see. It moves too fast, but slow it down with a digital cinema camera and you can see physics in action. The water molecules stick together, trying to form a perfect spherical mass. It's like an oversized drip of water from a faucet. Eventually, the force of gravity becomes too strong and the sphere collapses in a splash. Coming up, the secrets of the Colosseum on all the big things. What is it that even lions must fear? Find out on Caught in the Act. Why are the piranhas so lethal? We'll tell you on World's Deadliest. And what would you do on a deserted sandy beach? Well, Jim's got other plans on Weird But True. All this and much more coming up next on Nat Geo Rush. You're about to witness the wild side of nature. Combining some of the best amateur and professional footage from around the world. We reveal incredible animal behavior on Caught in the Act. Working together as a pride, lions are able to defend their cubs and to hold on to large territories. Together, they are also able to take down one of Africa's largest, the Cape Buffalo. But these hefty herbivores are notoriously bad-tempered, and tales of them fighting back are legendary. Early one morning, we were following a herd of buffalo. There was about 350 buffalo in the herd. And while we were following them, they started acting very strange as if there was predators in the area. We followed them for a while, and we found four young male lions. They're about two and a half, three years of age. And the buffalo started harassing the lions and the, the young males were trying to run away. They were trying to get away from the herd of buffalo. And in the confusion of 350 buffalo chasing these lions, they managed to divert one of them and they chased him. He ran into a tree that had a nice fork in it and he held himself up in the fork of the tree. And while he was up there, he started getting very tired. We could see his, his paws, he was starting to shake and he was looking for a place to, to jump down. But as he jumped down, he landed right in the middle of the buffalo. They started beating him, they started thrashing him in the air, and as he got on the ground, they were just pushing their horns into him. The guests they had at the time were incredibly emotional. They were screaming, do something, do something, but unfortunately, he just couldn't do anything. The lion had been hit numerous times by these buffalo. He was actually lying flat on the ground. I thought he was dead, and then he kind of looked with one eye open, and at the same time, a buffalo came from behind and hit him on the backside. 
and with the momentum it lifted him up and he took the gap and he ran away. He ran right through the gap. The buffalo ran right after him and we were then tailing both of them and we managed to see him escape, which was absolutely incredible. And uh, much the relief of all of us and I guess as well, just really excited that he managed to get away and we had such an incredible sighting. Strange markings have appeared on a Californian beach. Huge drawings that can only be appreciated from above. Nope, this isn't a message from the ancients or a new type of alien communication. It's an entirely man-made creation. Sand artist Jim Denovan doesn't need much in the way of supplies. It's perfect. Quite nice sharp edge. And a deserted, hard, flat stretch of sand is the perfect canvas. Centering himself in the space, he searches for the best place to start drawing. I very quickly found that it was uh, it was just like a big sheet of paper that was available every day at low tide, and that when the waves came in, it was fresh the next day. Up close, Jim's sketchings don't look like much, but from above, it's an entirely different story. When he draws, Jim doesn't count steps or calculate distances. He spatially solves the problem in his head. Jim recently took his talents to the Nevada desert. On a giant dry lake bed, he set out to make a drawing that could be seen from an aircraft 12,000 meters above the ground. Jim had to figure out how a drawing of this scale would read from so far above. This is what he came up with. Back at the beach, Jim has finished his drawing. What started as an untouched sandy canvas has evolved into a work of art. The drawing took hours to create, but it will disappear in minutes. But for Jim, that's all part of the job. I like starting the motions, continuing, and then finishing as the ocean's about to, to wash it over. Beach drawings. They may be just as fleeting as the perfect wave. story on all the big things. The Colosseum. Arena of blood and sand. The largest amphitheater in the classical world, standing as a monument to Roman engineering genius. This massive structure was built to seat up to 50,000 people. On a two and a half hectares of land, built on an ornamental lake, this architectural marvel is over 50 meters high. With 76 entrances, more than 60 trapdoors and 30 elevators, a retractable roof, a drainage system channeling over three kilometers, stone walls three meters thick with waterproof cement, Constructed almost 2,000 years back, this massive structure stood strong because of one key element, the arch, where the outer ring has 80 gigantic arches, seven meters high, forming a giant ring around the perimeter. On top of these, a set of another 80 arches, and on top of those is a third tier, making 240 arches in all. The largest freestanding amphitheater in the world was the brainchild of an upstart emperor, Emperor Vespasian. It was his dream, his vision, 
the vision to have the most spectacular amphitheater the world had ever seen. This Superdome dominated the Roman skyline. It was a powerful tool for controlling the masses and also a showcase for proclaiming Rome's domination in the world. Vespasian's amphitheater was now about to be christened in blood. The time of the gladiators had arrived. In the heart of South America, at the shallow inland lake, deadlier than the crocodiles, and even more feared than the anaconda, are Red Death, more commonly known as the piranhas. These hungry beasts attack in mobs. Their triangular razor-sharp teeth gives them their deadly reputation. Their swim bladders amplify sound before it's transferred to the ear bone, making them excellent listeners. And their fish nostrils, hidden under a flap of skin, heightens their strong sense of smell, just like the sharks. A bird stands little chance of survival if it's careless. In minutes, it's all over.